going on YouTube? We are back today with another very exciting video. Today we are up in Pompano Beach, Florida and we are visiting the world famous Gray's Taxidermy. Stay tuned, it's going to be an awesome show. How you doing? Good, good. good. Did Julian, Julian told me to ask for you? Oh, okay. You were just here, you were here to pick up the peacock bass? The peacock bass, yeah. Alright, cool. Yeah. So, uh, basically, everything you see in here belongs to someone. These are all live orders, so a lot of people think we just have fish kind of lying around. I mean, <laughs> everything in here is built to order. Built to order, right? So, um, we actually have a glass shop down the street. Okay. Okay. Where Sammy will actually re glass all the molds of the fish. Yeah, so then they'll basically get brought down here as we have room. This is where our finishers are at. So as basically a batch of fish gets done, they'll move forward and then uh, really, you know, Al will go up and trailer the rough cast of these fish down here to our finishers. And a lot of questions I get are what do the finishers do? When these things come out of the mold. Okay. They're, they're just basically a rough sheet of fiberglass. You right. know, I mean, I wish he had some that looked like it, but I mean, we'll use this marlin, for example. Okay. So, when these come out, there's just all excess pieces of fiberglass, rough edges, uh, the fins aren't on it, there's no eyes, there's no bill. It's just, I wish I had one, longer, but it's just a rough pad. And what these guys do, is they're gonna sand all that off, get all the edges off, all the fins on our fish are glassed separately as well, so they'll okay. glass the fins on. Um, they got to put the bill on, they'll put the glass eyes in here. And then really they're going to sand all this down, and you can see, I mean, all the scales are accounted for. I tell people, I mean, all the indentations in the tail, in the, in the whole fish. Yeah, it's super detailed, huh? Very detailed. So, the detail is the key with any kind of trophy like this, someone's going to mount on their wall. You know? Exactly. You want to have everything there. And what's neat about us is all of our fish are molded from real fish. Whisker fish. We're out of Florida right now. How do you get a mold for our guys? We used to go and fly to Costa Rica, fly to these places where these things are caught, stay there for months at a time and mold these fish, which is really, really neat. Um, so you can kind of see here, I mean, here you got a, this is a needle fish. Yeah, hound fish. Yep, yeah, got a big hound fish here. So this is kind of a perfect example. There's no eyes in the fish yet. You got no peck fins, okay? There's no there's no fins on the fish yet. So they gotta put the eyes in, they'll put the teeth in here, they'll put the peck fins on. Um, you can kind of see it's a two-part mold, so you can see okay. where the rough edges were. So this is where a guy sanded them down, and then, uh, you know, they'll go over and fix all that up, put the teeth in, put the eyes on, that's it. That's pretty awesome. And of course there's... That's cool, I get it. Obviously one of the big benefits to a mount like this is you're preserving the fish for catch you know release. future catches, you know, right. doing the catch and release. I tell people ten years ago, no there was no such thing as catch and release yeah. almost, you know, okay, maybe twelve years ago. It's the you know, this, for this industry it's taken a huge turn. Now we've been in business over fifty-five years, so before anyone even knew what catch and release was, people were bringing these fish to us and you know that's how we have all these molds. Right. Now a lot of these rules have changed, like you know, I mean, a big group or yeah, a carpet, you can't, you can't kill it. Thankfully, we have these molds, and along with the big marlin, you know, always we built it. Now, anyone who catches that, 95% of these people, they want to let these fish go. Right. Thankfully, you can take a measurement, take, take a picture, and that's all we need. You match it up to the closest fish that you guys have that's in stock, which is awesome. And we have thousands and thousands of molds. Which, that's a great thing, Conser conserving the fish for the future, you know? Exactly. Like the fish that I caught, it's literally close to a state record for a peacock bass, but why take it out of the water, you right. know, when you could just get a replica mounted, take a good picture, take yeah. your measurement, you know, you're going to have it on the wall to brag about it with your, your friends, you, you know, that, and then so. that fish might be another pound the next year you see it. Right. Another two pounds, you know, exactly. and it's ready to break the record, you right. know, so it's, right. it's the potential of, you know, the future, the future right. generation going after the fish. We do a lot of cool stuff now also with, uh, well, actually we have a tagging program going on where we, you know, a lot of our guys, they tag these fish, we release it, the customer then gets the information, they get their replica, they get their trophy, and then 
you know, it's really neat if, it's, if the fish is caught six months, six years down the road, when the people who catch it the next time call in and give us that number, we actually reach out to the customer and, uh, you know, let them know, did your fish grow anymore, how far it traveled, how far it was caught from the first time it was caught. That's awesome. And we get all kinds of information. I think there was a bull shark that was caught. Well, a good friend of mine, Nick Stanzik, down in the Keys, sure. he caught a, a small swordfish down there, tagged it, and my best friend actually caught it two weeks later in Jupiter. Really? Really neat. Isn't it incredible? Looks pretty neat just in this random row. You know, I mean, you got a giant remora, got a big mackerel, got a, looks like a rockfish from Alaska. No, it's actually a red grouper, I'm sorry. Big channel cat, so, you know, just a diff whole different array of fish, yeah. you know? It's really neat. It's pretty, it is actually really neat to see how many different species of fish are actually getting mounted and, right. and put up on a wall. Uh, and then they get hung on a rack. Once the rack fills up, they get wheeled down here. This was the last stage, well not this one, these are painted, but I was, the last time I saw, because Lee had sent me a picture of mine was on a rack, okay. but no paint on it. Okay. So I'm excited to kind of... Uh, yeah, so, you know, they'll get brought down. Okay. Um, so basically, uh, there's usually a rack here, but this is where they'll get primed for paint, or silvered as we call it. So you saw the fish were pretty much that white finish back there. For sure. They'll end up looking like this little wahoo here. Okay. So this is what this is what the primer looks like. So those he line silvers all these fish out here. Um, you know, this just helps the the paint pop, helps it stick to the mold real nice, and all that. Um, it's a silver primer, right? There. Exactly, exactly. And that's all he does all day. It's just it's you know, it's just one last chance to look everything over. Uh, you know, make sure everything's up to par again, because once this goes on, you're kind of kind of stuck if not. And then uh, really once that's done, silvers them, and then they kind of just get in line and get painted. Kind of see, you know, pretty much what Leo does here. So where the art has as well, the magic. Yep, yep, so we only have three painters. Okay. Uh, Leo's kind of airbrush in his hand since he was six years old. So he kind of knows what he's doing sometimes, but not usually. But I just wing it. He just wings it. That's the best way to do it, just wing it. <laughs> <laughs> so you kind of see here, I mean, he's got a complete mix pack. He's got camera jacks, mackerels, grouper fish, he's got sailfish there. So what he does, so don't for me, these are all silver. Right. So what he'll do here is he'll lay a length of the last paint on him. Okay. He goes over him with a steel. Okay. okay, so we are the world's largest, you know, very rarely, I shouldn't say very rarely, but out of a percentage-wise, a very small number of our guys are actually local. Okay. So we ship these fish out. So, Lee will paint them, we got two more artists back here, and then uh, really once they're done, they'll either get hung up to get picked up, Okay. or they get painted and they'll make their way forward here. This is where guys are going to basically build the crate and crate these fish up. So you guys crate them in-house? Yep. That's uh, awesome. I actually used to own a crating company. Really? That's hilarious, yeah, so, yeah. I mean, you know, these guys, I think Nick and Brad have been with us like 34 years. They're not crating as we speak right this second. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, it's Monday, so everyone's kind of, you So know. these are probably going to be sent out in a crate? Every order is different, not in the sense of even, <clears throat> you know, what fish it is, but it could be how many, uh, what fish are going with what. So you can see on every fish in here, there's paperwork on the bottom. That's a shop copy. That's how us in the front of the building communicate with the guys in the back. So when it gets time for them to crate and they grab that tiger shark hanging back there, he's going to look at it and it could say, just a tiger shark, or it could say, this tiger shark's going with a 102 inch sailfish and a 55 inch dolphin as well. Well now he's got to build a crate, you know, that 
custom fits those fish in there, and they'll actually build the crate around the fish. So they'll have the fish suspended in the crates, make a big wooden crate, they stack them out here, and then they cardboard over them, okay, just like this. And that's basically what you're left with. That's awesome, Chad. That's really good protection, so it'll make it anywhere across the country or anywhere across the world. Anywhere across the world. So it's really neat. Um, you know, like I said, we ship out, I think we're up to like 200 fish a week. 200 fish a week, wow. Yeah, so and there's a little empty back here right now just because it's Monday. But, you know, Vic and Brad will start doing whatever they're doing. They'll, they'll crate everything up. And that's it, man. And then off they go. Man, the facility is, is amazing. I see you got this too. It's like a little ocean type mount. Yeah, so <clears throat> you got a big mako shark here. You see the rod in the tail? Okay. That'll actually go in that wave. Yep, it's like on a pedestal. Um, and I'll show you something else over here. This, this goes on a wall, but this is like an on the wall wave. With wow. a sailfish in its mouth, with a bonita in its mouth. Really, really cool. I want to say we're the first to ever do anything like this in the industry. I, I could be wrong, but something really neat, something to think about if you ever wanted to get a trophy mounted. Uh, so this is pretty badass. Oh. So Joe in there, he actually sold this. So the guy, I guess he lives on the Mississippi. I bumped it. Don't quote me, but I think that's what it was. And uh, you know, I mean you are a diehard bass fisherman. This guy's a my hard catfish. Is this a blue cat? It is. Okay. Yeah. Giant blue cat. Uh, That's at least 100 plus pounds. Yeah, dude. I think it was a. I think it was like 98 pounds. Okay. I love you know, the details. Pretty crazy. So Garrett here, he actually hand makes all of these. So he'll cut a piece of foam. Okay. And then you know, you have to build this so that the fish is going to match up to it. Sure. So he double sides the fish, puts the rod in. He'll place the wood on there and. Um, you know, a little bit of driftwood, a little bit right. of nail. Exactly. You just move it up, you know. Whatever the customer says or describes to us, we can do. I am so incredibly excited for this, you guys. I haven't seen my mount just yet. Just finished taking the full tour at Gray's Taxidermy, and man, I gotta tell you guys, this place is incredible. If you guys live in South Florida and you're getting a trophy mount, definitely come by take a look at the facility it's amazing you guys got to definitely take a look at it but now we're gonna swing around the back we're gonna get this bad boy unveiled and loaded and then we're gonna take it home and get it mounted on a special place that I got picked out on the wall so stay tuned I hope you guys are enjoying the video so far you, 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 you want to take a look at it first yeah, here it comes oh my god that came out we do a lot of peacock bass that came out kick-ass Oh my goodness. This was a paint by photo we did? Yeah. yeah. I was going to say, I, I like on it. That light color is awesome. Oh my God, there she is. You want me to? Yeah, if you want to hold it. Oh my God, I'm just so excited. It'll look, and I tell everyone this, and I'm not just saying it, it looks much better once you get it up on the wall with the lighting on it. <laughs> oh my goodness, dude. That is crazy. Let's do it this way because the sun's going to get a glare on the camera. Jesus. It's been, a, it's been about, let's see. The hurricane happened in September. Yep. That's when I caught it during the hurricane. It's been about what seven months, eight months. Yeah. I'm like reliving the whole. I, I got like my heart beating again, like when I caught the fish the first time. It's like you can kind of see. I mean, you know, they're all multiple oh, little man. things. So you know, I mean, the scales are all there. It's got the texture, everything. The gills, yep. everything. I was just telling Lee, did you have the picture going around where you're like in the rain suit with all like the funny lettering under it when you caught it? No, no, no rain suit. I was in a Lucky Tackle Box shirt, one of my sponsors. Maybe that's, it might be the same one though. Uh, maybe I'm just thinking you're in a rain suit. I think I saw the picture going around. It was all storming around, yeah, it was cloudy. Yeah. I was in a t-shirt, GoPro on, doing the whole thing. Oh my goodness. Looks badass though, right? Oh man, yeah, the patterns, because I had that lighter patch it wasn't so even the, even the green you know yeah. I, was, I, was, I saw my dang that's a cool that's a really neat paint job oh my goodness that's jesus guys take a look at that what a beautiful mount eight months ago who would have thought we'd be trophy mounting this on the wall you guys got to check it out like i've been talking before you know catch like this don't kill it take the measurements you know girth length take some good pictures Get a trophy replica mounted. These guys here at Gray's Taxidermy, they do some awesome work. We're gonna go ahead and put this on the wall. I told you guys I got a special place picked out. Gonna catch you guys back at the house. Let's load it up.
Oh my god, man, I am so stoked. Jeez. <laughs> All right, so how do we put her in? What's the safest way? Bam, son. Woo. What a beaut. My feeling right now, I am literally on cloud nine. Oh lordy. Oh wait till that thing is on the wall. I cannot wait. All right you guys, so we are ready now to get our peacock bass mounted on our little office section here inside of my house. Super excited. I gotta say really quick big thank you to the team at Gray's Taxidermy. They did an incredible job with my trophy peacock bass that I caught last year during Hurricane Irma. I mean, I am literally reliving every single moment, looking at this peacock from the drive over here, re-looking at the pictures, to unloading it from my truck. I mean, this thing is absolutely incredible. I can't wait to see it up on the wall, get inspiration for it on a daily basis uh, when I'm planning out future fishing trips. <sighs> All right, you guys, so mission accomplished. I got this beautiful near state record peacock bass mounted up on my wall. I'm incredibly proud of the moment that I got to share with my wife when we caught this fish. During Hurricane Irma, it's, it's a time that I'm never gonna forget. I mean, it's like the situation, the way that it all played out. I'm gonna relive the story for you guys one more time, and if you guys wanna see it for yourself, the link will be in the description. So, I believe it was day one, when the hurricane was gonna be like 12 hours into touching ground. We go to my grandfather's house. Next morning I wake up, I'm bored. The storm is already over Florida, it's hitting Florida. But we're in between bands, and I decided to go out for a couple hours and do some fishing in between uh, the wind, the heavy gusts of wind. And after a couple hours, I spotted uh, this beautiful fish about 30 yards out, big lake, 30 yards out, sitting on a flat. And I started casting at it. Not much was happening, but I knew it was a big fish, uh, bigger than anything that I had seen, you know, that day or even recently. So I call my wife, I get on the phone, I tell her, please uh, come over here really quick, bring my tackle bag, bring the big camera, you know, bring everything with you that there's this huge fish and I gotta try to catch it. She gets over there, brings the stuff, I tie on some different lures, doesn't work. I end up tying this one lure from Zagaya and man, I gotta tell you, the second I tied that lure on, very small, little, uh, a little bone-like minnow, the fish lit up. It started It started to really react to it every time it came by. I believe after like the third or fourth cast, fish hooked up, fight was on, GoPro was shut off. Luckily, my wife was recording with the DSLR, had major GoPro issues. You know, we bring it, we bring it on shore, she runs to the car, gets the scale, we do the whole process. Weighed in just under eight pounds on the Rapala scale, measured it in, 24 inches long and man it's one of those moments that i'll never forget I'm, i can't wait to when my son is older i can kind of tell him look this is a story we had a hurricane come through and i caught this beautiful fish and i had the opportunity to mount it i'm really happy that i'm that i'm partnered up with the guys at gray's uh, taxidermy because as you guys can tell they do great work when it comes to immortalizing your fish catch gone are the days of having to kill these beautiful fish let's protect the species let's protect the fishing for future generations for my son your son their grandchildren and everyone else in the future let's protect them catch and release guys it's absolutely it's so important. We, uh, there's no reason, like, if you're not going to eat this fish, don't kill it for pictures, don't kill it for measurement, don't kill it to have it mounted. Um, you can have a beautiful replica made like this. It's very simple. Get a total length measurement in inches. Get a girth length as well in inches. And take a few good pictures. Picture from the front, picture from the top, picture from the belly, picture of the mouth, the gills, all of that stuff. Get really good, high quality pictures with your cell phone. Partner up with an agent and get yourself a beautiful mount printed. I'm gonna put some information in the uh, in the description box as well. You guys can contact me if you're looking for a mount or you guys could also hit up Gray's Taxidermy. They have a huge facility with a ton of agents standing by to help you guys out. And uh, man, all I can tell you is if you've ever thought about mounting a fish, I just had a great experience uh, getting my mounted. I actually paid for it. This wasn't free. This isn't a promotional video that they're paying me to do for you guys. This is just something, this was a moment in my life that I really enjoyed and I partnered with them earlier in the year. But like I said, it is something I gotta pay for and uh, it's totally fine. It was totally worth what I paid for this mount. I'm not gonna go into price on the video. If you guys are interested in something like this, message me. I'll put an email address below where you guys can email me at. If not, I'll put all of Gray's Taxidermy 
uh, information down below. You can hit them up as well and do it directly with them. But I just wanted to share this moment with you guys. I mean, I'm incredibly stunned by how well it came out. Looks identical to the fish that I caught just, I don't know, eight months ago maybe. This happened back in September. Today's uh, uh, about the second week of April. So yeah, some time has passed, but uh, the memory will never fade. And even less now that I have it on the wall, it's something that I could cherish forever, get inspiration from it. And uh, that's about it, guys. That's gonna wrap up my little uh, immortalization story. My beautiful peacock bass one I'll never forget. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you guys got any comments, any questions, definitely drop them down in the comment section below. I'll try to answer everything as quickly as I possibly can. If you enjoyed today's video, found it helpful, if you've been thinking about getting a mount and this video just kind of pushed you to the next level, you're like, yeah, I'm ready to do it. I'm glad I was able to help you guys out. Drop a big thumbs up for us. Share the video with your friends. And until that next one, you guys, I'll see you later. Tight lines. Peace.